Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Basic Steps to Starting a Business webinar. My name is Christopher Garcia, and I'm the Business Development Specialist at the SBDC at UNM Valencia campus. And we created this webinar off of a great document on a website called the Basic Steps to Starting a Business. And my contact information is on this slide, and a PDF of the slides will be emailed to you following this presentation. In fact, before we get too far into the slides, I wanted to show you that follow-up email because I get a lot of questions about links. Let me see. And it will give a, our participants time to stream in as well. Are you seeing uh, my slideshow? I am not seeing your slideshow. Are you seeing the follow-up email? Yes. Okay, perfect. So this is what the follow-up email that will go out to you. Don't, don't expect it tomorrow, but by, probably by Friday or Monday. And it has all the links and documents we'll cover in this webinar. And I might even have to use it to get onto some of the documents I talked about in the slideshow. So let me put that over and I'll talk about that later too. Let's see from the beginning. Okay, perfect. So before we begin, I wanna go over some webinar ground rules. Everyone on the call right now is muted, so don't worry about background noise. There's a feature to raise your hand and I'll use it to make sure the webinar is flowing. In fact, everyone who could see my slides and hear me, please raise your hand for me. Perfect, you guys are doing good. Very good. I'm gonna lower everybody's head. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. And if you have any questions related to like, I can't see the slides or something, please chat those over. And I, I see you're seeing my presenter notes. So let me do, see if I could duplicate slide, see if that works better. Perfect, thank you, David. And thank you, Leslie. And just to make sure everybody could use the Q&A, if you'd put a hi, hello, how are you into the Q&A, I'd appreciate it. Hi, Kim. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, David. Hi, Patricia. It looks like all of you are Zooming like pros. I'm not gonna have to worry about anybody. And let's see, I got a chat, but if you, oh, and hi, Kathleen. Kathleen, if you put your questions into the q and I'd appreciate that. And if you, everybody on the call, if you have a problem that's technical related, you can't see the slides or something like that, please put that into the chat. But anything related to the slideshow, please put in the Q&A. Perfect. And each slide is numbered. So if you have a question about a particular slide, please include the slide number and I'll revisit it. And hi, Kathleen. Move on. Perfect. I'm going to stop my video just until the end of the, the slide presentation, just because I want to preserve bandwidth, make sure everybody could see the slideshow. Here's a graphic of our center locations throughout New Mexico. The mission of the SBTC is to build skilled entrepreneurs and strong businesses by offering no cost confidential business consulting and lower no cost training events like this one. And I'm gonna tell you more about the SBDC in the next few slides. If you notice at the bottom of the screen, you see powered by the SBA, that's the Small Business Administration. And we are funded by the Small Business Administration, but we aren't a direct part of them. We are the arm of, of the SBA that provides technical assistance. This slide includes three topics for upcoming trainings. 
basic steps, QuickBooks Online Cybersecurity, but I always let Leslie Everson, our lovely webinar coordinator, talk about upcoming events. So Leslie, if you wanna address the group, you go right ahead. Thank you. Hi, I'm Leslie with the Small Business Development Center. I wanna tell you that we have lots of webinars and I'm putting more in today. So they're all no cost. We have coming up, um, Cash is king, cash management for your business. I have a whole list, that's why I'm reading. We have a cryptocurrency come up, watch for that. We also have, are you tax ready? Um, the idle PPP and employee retention, retention tax credit implications. If you had received that, need to know what the next step is, uh, look for that. Also early next week, we have a bilingual session on accessing financial resources and transitioning to the new normal. And we also have secrets to selling ads. Perfect, thank you for that lesson. Here's the agenda for today's training. I'm gonna tell you more about the SBDC, even more about the SBDC. Talk to you about our pre and post surveys for this training, get into the basic steps, and review and demonstrate our excellent research tools. And then I'll take questions and I'll put my camera back on. I'll uh, ask you periodically to raise your hand if I have a question and just be ready to do so. Perfect. Now let's talk about the services of the SBDC. We offer two major services, again, confidential business counseling and lower no cost business training. There are no limits to how much no cost counseling you can receive. We have centers throughout New Mexico, so there'll be one close to you. And if you look at the graphic in the upper right-hand corner, it shows what we do. Renew, grow, launch, and start up small businesses. This slide shows what we expect from our clients. My fellow business advisors and directors want you to succeed, so you'll be assigned homework or further research. So please do the work necessary to succeed. We can't make decisions for you or offer tax or legal advice. We could only connect you to the information you need to make educated decisions. And part of making educated decisions is working with licensed professionals like attorneys and accountants. And just by a show of hands, how many of you have um, consulted with an attorney or an accountant uh, regarding your small business? Good. I hope uh, the people who raised their hand found a very good professional that they're able to easily work with. And I'll show you some resources in the upcoming slides. Next, I wanna remind you about important surveys we send out as part of attending these trainings. Everyone who registered for this webinar received an email from Leslie Everson saying, in anticipation of the upcoming basic steps to starting a business in New Mexico event that you have registered for, we would like to collect some preliminary information from you. With this information in hand, we can tailor the course material to better fit your needs. So I wanna see, just by a show of hands, how many of you uh, received the pre-survey and have been filled it out? Very good, I see one. So if you haven't received the pre-survey, please look in your spam or your junk box um, or contact Leslie Everson or, or me and then we could get that out to you. You'll also receive a post-event survey for this uh, webinar and it's a, a review of the webinar. Please make sure to fill that out and um, check your spam and your junk box for that as well. It should come from uh, Leslie Everson. So thank you for that. Very good. Now let's talk about starting a business in New Mexico. And before going into business, there are some important considerations you must think about. Will I make enough money to live? Will this replace my current income? Do I need the benefits offered by my current employer like retirement plans, medical insurance, dental insurance, vision insurance, disability insurance, life insurance, or other important benefits? Can you replace those benefits by starting a business? You must also think about your educational background and skills. Do you have the correct educational background and skills to understand and operate the many facets of a business? 
This includes bookkeeping, accounting, human resources, supply chain management, sales, and that's just to name a few. If not, you may need to hire somebody to perform these tasks or take more of our training events. And I wanna show you a great document we have on our website. It's called Test Your Potential as an Entrepreneur, and it also includes um, the basic steps to starting a business. Okay, the link is a little finicky, so I'm gonna go to our follow-up email. And I'll open it from our follow-up email, just so you know it's there. So everybody who could see the Test Your Potential as an Entrepreneur um, a document, can you please raise your hand for me? Perfect, perfect. Okay, I'm glad you guys are, are able to see. Okay. So here is the uh, a little survey of your skills. So be honest with yourself when you complete this, just to see where you might need um, more education or help in uh, certain areas of running a business. Here's some entrepreneurial myths and misconceptions. Identifying some startup ideas is a great one. Here's the feasibility analysis, and this is something I really enjoy doing. So if you need any help with that, please reach out. And don't forget all the advisors across the SBDC network are um, versed in our research databases and can help you pull information to help you with this feasibility analysis. Here's an estimating the cost of startup. Here's a little bit about personal living expenses because you have to make sure that you're able to come with, cover your personal living expenses before you could uh, before you enter a business. So be sure uh, you have a good record of your personal expenses. Here's estimating some business operating expenses. Here's a recap of the cost. And here is the document on which this webinar is based, the basic steps to starting a business. And on the second side of it are um, helpful is a list of contact information for helpful agencies that you may need to contact when starting a business. So let me open up our slides. Perfect, perfect. Now we're gonna get into the slides, the steps one by one. Perfect. These slides will be emailed to all attendees, so don't worry about writing down web addresses. So step one is defining the business. This is the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And these questions are answered in a business plan. And if you need a business loan, you must provide a business plan to the lender. And many centers use a fill in the blank template and I'll email that to you in the follow-up email. Uh, but there are many options for creating a business plan like uh, online software such as LivePlan. SBA.gov has a great training with worksheets and we have many more tools at nmsbdc.org. I also want to point you toward the New Mexico Economic Development Department one-stop website for starting a business. That's gonm.biz. And this website is a partnership between New Mexico agencies that you must contact when starting a business. So I've already showed you the basic steps handout. Let's go to the New Mexico Economic Development Department website. And let me see, let me get rid of that window. And I wanna show you some of the great resources on this website for people wishing to start or expand their business. So let me go through that again. If you go to the business development tab and the New Mexico EDD programs for business link, it takes you to this page. And on this page, there are little bubbles for different um, categories of programs in this overall umbrella. The ones I wanna go over today are in finance development. And I first wanna to talk to you a little bit about LIDA, which is the Local Economic Development Act. And what the Local Economic Development Act allows uh, municipalities to do is they put aside a pot of money at the state level and then if there is a project that uh, or a business that wants to locate or expand in a certain municipality, they could award the municipality funds to reimburse that business for different startup expenses or expansion expenses. And they have a little bit of, uh, they have some uh, qualifications here. The business has to make a significant community impact or support the community significantly. 
It has to be in rural and, or in underserved areas of New Mexico. They don't always have to be in rural and underserved areas, but it's a, a definite plus if they are. They have to have increased wages and job creation. So the big one is job creation, significant new capital investment and environmentally sustainable outcomes. And if or in order to qualify for this program, you just gotta meet the qualifying criteria. And then if you go to the bottom of the page, there's some contact information, Mr. Torres. So that's a great way for pre those of you wanting to start a business that might fall into these categories. It's usually something in manufacturing, processing or assembling, um, a commercial enterprise or storing warehousing or distributing or selling products of agriculture, mining or having been manufactured or an economic based employer, which means you bring in most of the revenue you make from outside of New Mexico. So that's Lita. The next one I wanna go over with you all is the collateral assistance program. So some of you on the call may want to start a business, but you, maybe you want to build a storefront or you have um, uh, equipment that costs a lot of money and you need to take out a loan. When you're taking out a small business loan, a lot of the banks won't consider new, new businesses. You might have to go to an alternative lender like the Loan Fund or DreamSpring. And when you go to the Loan Fund or DreamSpring, they, they, depending on your credit rating and the type of business, they might require, do require dollar for dollar collateral on that loan. So if there's a gap in your collateral needs for the loan, uh, the collateral assistance program will work with the lender to cover that collateral gap. I think they take out some sort of security or bond and uh, they basically guarantee the portion of your loan not covered by collateral. And there's a, a more laxed qualifications for this program. As you can see, really, if, as long as you have under 750 employees and you're located in New Mexico. And you could pay for startup costs, working capital, and see when you take out things like startup. Startup costs could include equipment, but if you're taking out uh, a loan for working capital, inventory, those things are often not collateral backed and could create a gap for you in getting that loan. So that's that great collateral assistance program there. And then the last program I wanna highlight for you is the Opportunity Zones. And the best way to talk about Opportunity Zones is to visit the map. Let me see if I could go in a little bit deeper into the map. And I like to highlight Valencia County because that's, uh, I serve Valencia, Socorro and Southern Valencia counties. And here we are in Valencia County. And if you look at the map here, the zones highlighted in this orange yellow color are the um, public opportunity zones. The purple are the public private partnership zones. Uh, they're usually on a Pueblo or public lands. But if you decide you wanna open a business in this orange, yellow, uh, sector, there are incentives for doing that. You could apply for funding through opportunity funds. And let me see if I could find a listing of opportunity funds. Okay, perfect. I'm gonna chat over this link. I didn't include it in the slideshow or the follow-up email, but if you're interested in opportunity funds or opportunity zones or, or investing in an opportunity zone or fund, this is a great um, resource for you. There's not a lot of information, but there's more and more information as time goes by. So what these are, are the listings of opportunity funds and what opportunity funds are are their, their investment funds created uh, from wealthy individuals or wealthy businesses that decide they wanna defer capital gains taxes. And if they invest in an opportunity fund, they don't have to pay, uh, they could defer the, the payment of their 
um, capital gains taxes between five and 10 years. And then if they hold the investment for 10 years, they may not have to pay any capital gains taxes until they sell the portion of the, their ownership in the fund. And there's not a lot in New Mexico, but there are some that cover the Southeast, Southwest, some are nationwide. And they have, they have um, certain criteria. Some of them uh, want to address different issues like food deserts, affordable housing, rehabilitation centers, uh, block development, neighborhood stabilization, hemp infrastructure. Uh, a lot of them have affordable housing as one of their, uh, their missions. But if you, you have to make a pitch, so usually you have to create a business plan, get in contact with one of these fund, fund managers, pitch the idea to them and they may invest in your business. And that would be a contract between you and the investors. Before I'm, I'm gonna go back to our slides and before I move on to the next step, I gave you a lot of information there. Uh, do you have any questions about any of the economic development department programs that we just talked about? Okay, I don't see anything in the Q&A. If you do decide you have a question about any of those economic development department programs, please put them in the Q&A and I'll be happy to, uh, to visit them. Okay. Step two is to choose a business name. And there are legal considerations with choosing a business name. And it's very important to find a name that resonates with your target market looks good on websites, social media, business cards, and other marketing material, is easy to spell and pronounce, and isn't trademarked or copywritten by another business. For example, there was a restaurant in Albuquerque called D's Cheesecake Factory. And if you grew up in Albuquerque, this is probably one of your favorite places for lunch or a sweet treat. The owners of D's Cheesecake Factory started this business after World War II and trademarked the name in the state of New Mexico. Fast forward to about 2010, 2011, there's a national chain called the Cheesecake Factory that wants to do business in New Mexico, but can't operate a business with Cheesecake uh, Factory in the name because the savvy business owners at D's reserved the name many years before. In this example, the small business had the upper hand, but you could imagine how a small business operating under a trademark business name could end up being sued have to change their business name and all that expensive marketing material, and it might actually destroy a new business. There are two types of trademarks. There's a state and a federal trademark. And the first uh, website on our screen is for the United States Patent and Trademark Office. That's where you um, register for your federal trademark. If you're gonna do business online or more than one state, that might be a good option for you. The second link is for the New Mexico Secretary of State's office, and that's where you apply for state trademarks. Say if you were a single uh, or a family owned restaurant that's only gonna open in say, um, Taos, New Mexico, you might not be worried about a federal trademark. You might wanna just have a state trademark like these Cheesecake Factory. I'll show you some great resources later in the presentation, including the newest member of our SPDC team, the Technology Commercialization Accelerator at New Mexico Tech, staffed by a Stephanie the Rawlings. And what they do is they provide um, counseling regarding intellectual property, so patents, trademarks, um, and whatnot. And I just got a question the, when we went over the, the economic development department um, funding programs, will that be included in the um, follow-up email. The link to the New Mexico Economic Development Department will be included. And um, if you want me to show you the path to find out more information about those programs, put that in the Q&A. And I will revisit that at the end of the presentation. Perfect. Step three is choosing and registering your legal structure. And the legal structure of your business is its foundation. You must carefully consider how you wish to legally operate your business and how you're gonna be taxed. And the common business and structures are on the slide. Sole proprietorships, limited liability companies, corporations. Everything but sole proprietorships must be registered with the New Mexico Secretary of State's office and the paperwork is available solely online. More information about legal structures can be found in the document called Basics of Choosing a Business Entity on our website. 
Let's see if this works. If not, we'll go to the follow-up email. Okay. Let me go to our follow-up email. And then we have the document basics of choosing a business entity. Would you raise your hand for me if we, you could see the basics of choosing a business entity? Perfect, thank you guys. So this document was put together by an attorney. It talks about the laws under which you're governed as a small business owner. Then it goes into the descriptions and the pros and cons of each type of business entity. And uh, remember I told you sole proprietorships aren't governed by the New Mexico Secretary of State's office. That's because they do business as another name. We don't have a formal doing business as registration uh, process here in New Mexico. So if you wanted to keep, make sure you wanted to keep your name, you would have to incorporate. If not, you could get your business license. They ask you to put your DBA name. So if I'm a sole proprietor, the name of my business would be my name. I would use my social security number and I could do business under Christopher's Plumbing and Heating, something like that. That's kind of a weird concept to understand. So if you have questions about it, please put it in the, the Q&A and I could go into it further. And I have a little secret uh, link right there. It's the letter B in the slideshow. And B corporations are rather new and uh, they're kind of trendy, not so much trendy, but they're kind of um, very progressive in the way they're operated. So benefits corporations are corporations that provide a public um, charitable benefit. So let's use for an example, Tom's shoes. I used to love Tom's shoes when I was younger. And whenever you buy a pair of shoes from Tom's Shoes, they provide us a pair of shoes for somebody in Africa. And that's an example of a benefits corporation. We also have one of the first benefits corporations in the United States here in New Mexico, and that's the, the Taos Ski Valley. And if you want more information about uh, choosing the business structure that's right for you, it really depends on your personal tax situation and uh, the legality, how you wanna handle the legal aspects of your business. So it's always good to consult with a CP or an attorney. So let's go back to our slides. Now that we're having fun with paperwork, let's talk about step four. Obtain your federal employer identification number. This is the unique identification number issued to your business by the IRS and is used on all federal filings. And if you're a sole proprietor, your social security number is commonly used instead of an EIN. You could still get an EIN number if you're a sole proprietor, but uh, you're, it's defaulted to use your social security on federal filings. This number is just as important as a social security number and should be protected as such. In fact, there's more fraud that happens with EIN numbers than with social security numbers. And no matter what business entity you choose, it's a good idea to obtain this number and it's required to open a business bank account at most banks and credit unions. And it's free to apply for. They, they have a great IRS um, self-employed and, and small business tax center. And they have a lot more information about why do you need an EIN number, what to do if you lose your EIN number, and uh, so on and so forth. Continuing with their paperwork requirements, step five is to register with the New Mexico Taxation and Revenue Department to obtain a gross receipts tax ID. Uh, some people call them TAP IDs, some people call them CRS numbers, CRS IDs. Um, it, it, but what it comes down to, it's, it's the number you need to pay, file and pay your gross receipts tax. So let me give you the fancy language for it. It's a unique identifying number used by the New Mexico Taxation and Revenue Department to record and track your business's collection and payment of gross receipts tax. If gross receipts tax is a new term for you, you might recognize it as a tax you pay whenever you buy goods or services in New Mexico. It's around 8% and shows up at the bottom of your receipt. The online registration form is free to complete, but you may wanna seek the advice of a certified public accountant or a bookkeeper 
when completing the application because sometimes you won't file your reports or pay it yourself. You might outsource that to a bookkeeper or an accountant. You must file your gross receipts tax reports on a monthly, quarterly, or bi-yearly schedule. Uh, even if you don't have gross receipts taxes to report, you still have to file a zero on the report. So be cognizant of that or else you'll get a $5 fee. And since uh, gross receipts taxes are important to the state and such a um, difficult concept to grasp for many new small business owners, they offer workshops. And here's their workshop page. It's included in the set of links I'll send you. They have one for new businesses and one for new employers. And the next gross receipts tax workshop will be August 10th. And if you haven't attended one of these, even if you, uh, if, if you're a small business owner at all, attend the webinar. It's an hour of your life if you're a new business owner. It's, um, let's see, ten, three hours of your life if you're a new employer and you need to pay those state withholdings. So just take this webinar. Uh, and if you decide you don't want to deal with this, then you know you need to hire a bookkeeper and account. Excuse my clock in the background. going to mute you Okay. Now we all know it's 12 o'clock. Step six is to, uh, step six is to obtain your local business license and other applicable licenses. When doing a business in New Mexico, you need a business license in the municipality or county where you have a physical presence. For instance, Teal Filo's restaurant has a physical presence in Los Unas, so they get a village of Los Unas business license. If they had a food truck and did business in Belen, they, would have, they will have to obtain a temporary or full business license in the city of Belen. Some of you might be thinking that you're gonna do business online or in another state, um, so, if you have any questions pertaining to the that, um, do I need a business license here? Do I need a business license there? Contact the municipalities where you're gonna do business. But the rule of thumb is where you're physically located. So if you had a food truck, you're gonna go from Los Angeles to Berlin, you would be physically located in Berlin. It's different for some contractors and uh, you, know, you could gain more insights from the city or county offices. Each municipality or county has different requirements for obtaining a business license. So check with the municipality or county offices or consult an attorney for further advice. And for instance, Rio Communities asks you to sketch a floor plan of your business. Even if it's a home-based business out of a room in your home, they still want a, a sketch of the floor plan. And Socorro County doesn't have a formal business licensing process. They just have a letter on their website that says you don't need a business license to operate a business in the Socorro County and they ask that you get your gross receipts tax ID. And an important item you must obtain before you could apply for any business license is your New Mexico CRS ID, gross receipts tax ID, um, whatever you wanna call it. Perfect. Step seven is to report new hires to the New Mexico directory. And the link to the directory is on the slide, but this brings human resource considerations into light. Human resources is a very important part of any business and comes with many legal and accounting considerations. You can always contact an accountant and attorney for specific information, but I included links to two good resources for learning more about employment procedures and laws. Our partners at ComplyRight have a great blog with lots of resources for small business owners. And the Equal uh, Employment Opportunity Commission has a learning center. And if you're gonna have employees at all, take a look at the EEOC, the, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's Learning Center or Resource Center, and read the tips for small business and the small business requirements. If somebody feels that you're, you are discriminating against them as far as the protected classes, race, race, creed, color, national origin and whatnot, they will file a complaint through the Equal, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and they issue a right to sue letter. So it's better for you to know what you're uh, required to do than get a, a lawsuit down the road. 
Let me go back to our slides. But, and I'll visit ComplyRight too. ComplyRight is a service, they, they provide like a, 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 a all one-stop electronic service for uh, human resources and they sponsor our America's SBDC conference, but they have a blog that's free and they have tons and tons of great information like COVID-19 considerations, communication strategies and policies for what comes next. Um, take advantage of all their free material and know that uh, they a lot of places like this offer a service where they provide uh, employment postings for you. Just know that they're for, most of them are free through the uh, Department of Workforce Solutions. So check with your Department of Workforce Solutions before you uh, purchase anything online from uh, organizations like this. Keeping with the HR trend, step eight is if you have employees, you may need to complete form ES802. This is a required form from the New Mexico Department of Workforce Solutions or Connections. And the Department of Workforce Solutions has many services, tax credits, and learning opportunities for small business owners. And I included their um, business outreach website. And I just wanna show it to you. Some of the common services they offer are job postings. That's probably the biggest one. Pre-employment screenings, which I don't think are taken advantage of enough, like typing tests. And in some cases, they may provide space to conduct interviews. Uh, here, if you're gonna have employees whatsoever, visit this website, know what you need to know about unemployment insurance, uh, know what your uh, quarterly filings are for the Department of Workforce Solutions, uh, here's the, the employer hand, the unemployment insurance employer handbook. Read that. Starting a new business, learn more. Take a look at that. And then here's the hiring incentives. So if you hire people in a, they call it high, high risk applicants, uh, they can protect you from theft with a bond. So say you want to hire somebody uh, with an embezzlement charge as a bookkeeper, uh, they'll provide you with a $50,000 bond in case something happens in the business. There's tax credits, so if you hire somebody like a veteran, uh, somebody from a disadvantaged class, uh, you might be able to get a, a tax credit and you don't have to pay as many withholdings. Well, you have to pay the withholdings, but you might not have to pay match them so much. Let me go back to the slideshow. Okay, step nine is if you have employees, seek the assistance of an accountant. You can see all the tax acronyms on the slide and if you aren't willing or able to deal with them, please seek out a bookkeeper or an accountant. Um, some online uh, software like QuickBooks Online, Patriot Software, um, Zero by Microsoft, they have some really good um, payroll solutions. They are a little hard to set up at first and there's a lot of tax implications that come with them like Suda, Fuda, Fit, Sit, FICA. And you want to make sure you keep, you're taking care of those obligations. And in fact, the IRS has a great small business taxes webinar. I think it's called Small, Biz oh, small Business Tax Workshop. And this goes through at least the first five, four steps to go through everything you need to know as a small business owner regarding uh, federal taxes. If you're going to be an employer, take the whole eight session course, all eight lessons, because the other lessons go into employment taxes and withholdings. In fact, I'm going to chat over the, I thought that was the link to the uh, small Business Employee Tax Center. So I'm going to chat over the link to the self, Small Business and Self-Employed Tax Center to everybody on the call. And I mentioned to you earlier about EIN numbers. Here's the link for to learn more about EIN numbers, self-employment taxes if you're a sole proprietor, um, or a LLC who files as a sole proprietor. E-file employment taxes, that's the trend. They want people e-filing instead of paying by paper. If you're self-employed, they give you more information for the self-employed, preparing your taxes. And one uh, I like to highlight is the gig economy. So if you're using something like a ride share service 
uh, you have you get a 1099 at the end of the year. So technically, you're considered a business owner, and this teaches you a little bit more about your obligations as a, a business owner for filing those tax returns. Let me go back to our slideshow. Step 10 is to seek the assistance of an attorney. And we talked about the important legal landmines in starting a business like the EEOC. And our attorneys are licensed to answer these questions. So for patents and trademarks, there are two great, there's two great resources. One is the New Mexico State University Patent and Trademark Resource Center. And uh, they get the grant from the, pat, uh, the United States Patent and Trademark uh, uh, Department to host the Patent and Trademark Resource Center. And David Irvin is the manager there. He's very knowledgeable. And if you're seeking a patent, trademark, copyright, and you need help doing the research to see if that name is taken, that uh, trademark is being used, you could uh, consult with him. And he consults with people across the, the state of New Mexico. So no matter where you're at, he's able to consult with you. The second place I mentioned is Stephanie Rawlings earlier is the New Mexico Tech TCA, which is the Technology Commercialization Accelerator. I just get tired of saying Technology Commercialization Accelerator. And um, they help people with um, no cost confidential counseling regarding intellectual property. And th they serve the entire state or Stephanita serves the entire state. So if you have any questions, reach out to a Stephanita. I will chat over this um link to everybody on the call right now because i don't know if it's updated in our resources page and uh, she is magic with those databases just like david urban they're, they're both great resources let me close some of these windows i have open i'll leave that one up for now Let's return to our slideshow. Now I want to show you the New Mexico Bar Association, or they just rebranded re themselves. They have a different name now. They're called the State Bar of New Mexico. And I have to get out of this because these links aren't the best. They don't work very well for me. In the follow-up email that I'm going to send you, I have uh, a link to the State Bar of New Mexico. And if you are looking for an attorney, there's two options for you. So you go to For the Public, and then there's I Need a Lawyer, and then there's an online bar directory, and then there's the general referral program. So if you are you know, overwhelmed, you want help finding an attorney who uh, has the expertise to take on your case, and you want a 30-minute consultation, uh, this is what that program does. If you are good with databases, you're pretty savvy, you want to do a little bit more research about attorneys, you could use the find a lawyer database. And I usually do it by county. We'll use Bernalillo County as an example because there's a, a lot of attorneys that practice in Albuquerque. There aren't going to be many attorneys that practice in places like Jal, New Mexico, Tierra Maria, um, even here in Belen or Los Unis, well, we might even we might have one, if any at all. And then I use this option here, the practice areas. And some of the practice areas you might need as a business owner would be business and corporations. Intellectual property for those patent trademarks, copyrights. Estate planning is good for everybody. Taxation. And I'm looking for employment law. Labor and employment law. So those are the four categories of attorneys you may need as a small business owner. Uh, remember attorneys practice in more than one area. Um, most likely. And here you could see what county these attorneys are in. They list their name and if you, uh, we'll pick one at random. If you go into their profile, they tell you what firm they work for, if they work for a firm, their email address and their phone number. 
And they also give all their practice areas. So this one, antitrust, consumer protection, business and corporations, estate planning, taxation, probate and wills. And this person practices in Bernalillo County, Chavez, Eddie and Roosevelt. So those are all good things to know when you're trying to find an attorney. Let's go back to our slideshow. Step 11 is to review the guidelines for compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. And this is a big legal landmine for small businesses and should be carefully considered. There's um, some great resources on the Americans with Disability Act website. If you go to that website, there is a primer for small business. And if you're gonna go into business, if you're gonna have employees come to a location or you're gonna have um, serve the consumers uh, at a storefront, please read that, A Primer for Small Business. It's well worth your time. Perfect, perfect. We're going along just great. We're on step 12 now. Step 12 is to establish a business bank account. It's best practice to keep your personal and business finances separate, and this makes your bookkeeping process easier and will help you if your business experiences an audit. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or the FDIC, has a great learning module for small business owners called FDIC Money Smart for Small Business. And I recommend everyone attending today's call take the Banking Services module. So let's go to the FDIC Money Smart for Small Business. And at the bottom of your screen, you could see all the modules with an instructor guide, the participant guide, and the PowerPoint. And banking. So if you take not, if you take the whole thing, if you're able to, but if you take nothing else, take the banking services available for small businesses because small business banking is different than regular banking, and uh, learn the ins and outs from the insiders, the FDIC. Let's see here. Okay, we are on our last step and lucky step number thirteen. Our final step is have adequate business insurance coverage. The slide shows the common types of insurance coverage and I recommend you research your options with an independent insurance broker. Oftentimes independent insurance brokers sell insurance for many different companies and tend to be less biased. You can learn more about business insurance by visiting the link on the slide and it's for Hitchcock's insurance company's blog. Hitchcock's is another sponsor. They're one of the largest insurers in the United States. And that the of course the link wouldn't work for me. So let me go to our follow up email. So Hitchcock's is one of the largest insurers in the United States, and they have a free blog with a lot of great information specifically for SBDC clients. That's why it's Hitchcock's.com/sbdc. And if everybody who's in business, they usually need insurance. Uh, if you're going to go on to anybody's property, you should have insurance. If you have a storefront, you definitely need insurance. And this explains the different, this blog will explain the different types of insurance. What is small business insurance? What is general liability? And what is professional liability insurance? Let me tell you, explore your options with an independent insurance broker. Take advantage of the free information available to you from Hitchcock's insurance. Okay, that was a mouthful. We got through all 12 steps in record time. Next, I'm gonna to talk to you more about the databases uh, and research tools that we have to help you create a business plan or plan for the future of your business. But before I do that, I'm gonna look at the Q&A. And let's see, Patricia asks, you may, have, may you have several DBAs. Usually you only have one per business, but you could have several DBAs. You could be, um, Christopher's Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, or C H C P H C P P C H C. Uh, but explore explore those questions with um, 
your local municipality and an attorney if you need specific legal advice. Patricia also asks, does a social security number work the same as an EIN for businesses, uh, business level buying of supplies? And that doesn't, Patricia, most of, the, most of the time they ask for an EIN if you wanna be a wholesaler. And you could apply for an EIN even if you're a sole proprietor. But they do give you a hassle with that. Yeah, I've tried to get my discount too. Now that we covered all 13 steps to starting a business, I wanna share with you some research tools that we use to gain insights into industry analysis, market research, demographics, and traffic counts. These data tools are very, very important to the success of your business because they help you fill in your business plan, make informed decisions, and plan for the future. Your business is a big investment, so treat it as such. Let me see, we might have gotten another Q&A. No, we did not. So the first link is a great 30 minute webinar from the SBA's website on how to write a business plan. And they also provide great worksheets and examples of financial projections. So I wanna show you that. They just rebranded um, all their things on the SBA website, the Small Business Association website. Let's go back to our follow-up email. So here is the small business, write your business plan lesson on their website. They have traditional business plans and need startup plans. I like to go with traditional business plans myself. And they have um, sheets with, your with um, copies of financial projections towards the end. And if you need more help with that, you let, me, you let one of our advisors know throughout the state and we're happy to provide you with more information and guide you through the business planning process. The second link is for bplans.com by Palo Alto Software. Uh, this website provides you with numerous business plan examples. And back in the olden times, they used to sell this on a, on a CD-ROM. They used to sell the, the database of all their business plans. And they have numerous examples of many, many different business plans. They also have um, great how to write a business plan templates, uh, startup budget templates, cash SWOT analysis, cash flow forecasts. Take advantage of the free resources from bplans.com. The third link is for Census Business Builder. And this is a no cost database that allows you to find demographic information about your customers census stats about businesses in your industry and estimates of yearly household expenditures in different categories. It's probably my favorite uh, free resource for everybody on the call today. And I'll, I'll display that one for you. So let's go to number four. If you wanna find traffic counts for your business, that's the jurisdiction of the Council of Governments. My Council of Governments happens to be the mid region or the middle Rio Grande Council of Governments. And if you wanna search traffic count data, they actually have that, uh, you have that availability um, in, at least in the middle of New Mexico. Most of the time they release reports and they're usually two or three years behind and give you traffic counts for, for um, track stretches of road. And I'm looking for the traffic flow maps and access the map. Let's see if they go a little further. Yeah, this is a great map. They go even further, but you might, if you live in a rural area, you might have to look at that report to find um, the most up-to-date information about your, your rural area. But if you look at this, if you're in Albuquerque Metro, the roads that they track are highlighted in uh, a different color. Sometimes they're not highlighted at all and you could double click on them. Usually the only the ones that are highlighted give you information. So let's see how many people travel down this stretch of Cole Avenue. East of I-25 Frontage Road, west of University. Whoa, uh, let's see, that's a lot of people traveling. Not, not as much as I thought. 
So let's see, in 2019, they had the average daily traffic count and the average weekday traffic count. So daily about 11,284, and on a, a weekday, 12,120 people travel that stretch of road, Cole Avenue. So if you wanted to start a business along that stretch, you would know just how many people pass that, uh, that intersection a day. And this is great if you wanna start up a storefront, if you wanna um, locate your office somewhere. Let's do Central Avenue, just so you could see the difference. So this stretch of Central Avenue, so it's central between Yale and, uh, it looks like here yeah, between Yale and Columbia Drive. So that's right across from the university. The average daily traffic counts 32,169 and the average weekday traffic counts 33,753. That also tells me that the storefronts are probably very expensive to rent along that stretch of road. So I got, I gave you some information about that. Let me go to Census Business Builder. When I'm, I gave you the direct link in the follow-up email, but when I'm searching for Census Business Builder, I just go to Google. And type in Census Business Builder. And then I get to census, I go to the census.gov link. And there are two types of census business builders. There's the small business edition and the regional analyst edition. If you wanna get into very small sections of neighborhoods that, or census districts as they call them, the regional analyst edition would be good. And that's probably for somebody who lives in a, a city, Las Cruces, Santa Fe, Albuquerque. If you live in a rural area or a not so populated area, uh, my rule of thumb is a, an area with less than two zip codes. Uh, you want to use the small business edition, and we'll use that today. So when you're looking for information from this database, they ask you to type in a NIAX code or NAICS code. And if you need help finding a NAICS code or, or want to learn more about what that is, um, reach out to your small business advisor or director in your area. For today's example, we're gonna use food services. Some of these, these buttons are some of the common options that people use. And we'll use restaurants because there's a lot of information on restaurants. If you're in an industry where there's not a lot of information or we don't have a lot of that industry in New Mexico, you're gonna get less information. And as you see here in the grayed out area, they, you could search for state, metro areas, counties, cities or towns or zip codes. I like to use Valencia County. And you could go to a map and you could explore. Uh, so say if I was looking for a place where there was people, a very wealthy set of people, maybe I wanted to start a flower shop, a jewelry store. Uh, I could explore the different places on the map if I'm looking for general information and, the, and what I prefer is to create the report. This database is a little finicky. So if you wanna explore the map, make sure you have really good internet connection. We're gonna to see today if this, this even loads. I'm gonna stop share while this loads. I'm gonna see if I have one already loaded. In fact, last time I did this, um, Okay, I'm having trouble sharing my screen. So Leslie, are you on the line with us? Yes, I am. Hey, Leslie, I can't Hi. share my screen. I, I think um, you have to enable it. Oh. It was, it was letting me share my screen real good and then it took my privileges right away. How, try it now, Chris. See if you have the privileges back. I do, because I okay. can start my video. Hi, so there get, you okay. are. Hey, <laughs> so let me share this. This uh, Census Business Builder hasn't been working for us, has it? Let it me look is. for, 
Yeah, it's some... been a little spotty. Um, if you... I have one from Valencia County. I'm going to try to open it and okay. I'll share my screen. I just have happen to have one up my sleeve. Okay, and here's what the report looks like when, you, when you're when you able to open it. Make sure you're, you're using it early in the morning or late in the afternoon, as you can see from what happened today. The first part goes over the, the demographic breakdown of the area, race, age, whatnot. Oh, and it looks like my PDF is giving me trouble, so I'll keep opening this. The second part is socioeconomic character characteristics. So what's the median household income? My rule of thumb is for those of you who want to open up a restaurant or a retail establishment, make sure your the median household income in your area is at or above the national average. And then I'll, uh, I'll, I could explore these more with you one-on-one. -on -one. I, I just want to get through this before the program stops. And my favorite part of this uh, report is average household expenditure in different areas. So in Valencia County, the average household expenditure on women's apparel per year is $525.17. And you could see how that's very helpful for you. Say you want to expand your online market, you might want to go into areas that have high expenditures in a category that meets your products or services, or you might want to uh, see where you want to, or, or look for an area where you want to start a storefront. And uh, this is a good way to do that. I'm sorry about that technical difficulty today. Let's go back to our slides. And then we have special databases that the SBDC pays for. That includes IBIS World, Reference USA, which is now Data Excel, and demographics now. And I want to show you IBIS World. And if we have time or if you want to explore it more, we, I could show you Data Excel. So if you want to explore Data Excel further, put that in the q and I think I only have time to go over IBIS World with you. If any of you on the call have access to the UNM data uh, or have a UNM login, uh, you could access these databases. It's better to access them with somebody who has experience because there's a lot of information and I'll go over the high points of, a, of one of them with you today. And I like to use restaurants as an example because There's a lot of information about restaurants. Let me pull one of these reports. So it gives you the primary activities, the major products. My favorite parts are the key external drivers. I like to call these the key economic drivers. So what drives a single location full service restaurant? Consumer spending, consumer confidence index, which just means how confident consumers are to spend, healthy eating index, households earning more than $100,000 per year, and urban population. It tells you who your suppliers are, and who your buyers are. Sometimes if you sell a product that's uh, marketed to businesses and consumers, you'll see first and second tier buyers. 
let's see what the key external drivers are doing. They, they have these key external drivers from 2016 to 2021, and it looks like they were all growing. Here's revenue and it's projected out between 2016 and 2026, and it looks like it's gonna stay the same. Here's profit in that industry. It looks like they didn't venture a guess into the future, but it looked like it was growing uh, and it's growing this year in 2021. Profit margin for this industry is pretty low, 4%. So four cents out of every dollar you make in revenue goes to the business's profit. And it looks like it start, it's on a growing trend. The number of businesses looks like it, they ventured a guess. It looks like it's going to stay about the same between 2016 and 2026. Same for employment and same for annual growth in wages. Here are the product and service segmentations in the industry. So this is across the United States. It looks like for full service, single location full service restaurants, Asian restaurants are the most popular across the US followed by US restaurants. Yeah, we love our hamburgers, European, and then Mexican restaurants, and of course, steakhouses is a small percentage. Here's your SWOT analysis or your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Very important to know before going into, into an industry or continuing to operate a business. Here is the performance in the industry over the years. So this, you could tell this is market driven. So here's the consumer confidence index. So it looks like whenever consumers are confident to spend, it goes up a little bit. Look like it didn't do that in 17. And uh, it follows revenue and consumer spending as well. You might have heard of the B-shaped recovery in the news, and that's the V-shaped recovery in uh, graph form. This tells you where your uh, your industry is in the business life cycle. This one's ha this industry happens to be in the quality growth. So if you're going to enter the industry or grow your business, this is a great time to do so. In this industry, at least. Your product service segmentations, and then the, my one of my favorite parts of this is the marketing, the major markets. So who? who are the markets you want to spend money on and what drives this business are households earning more than a hundred thousand want to spend your marketing dollars on them followed by those are those earning between 50 and about a hundred and so on and so forth if you're going to prepare a business plan we often have to do a set of financial projections especially if you need a, a small business loan and this puts our cost structures into um, perspective so this gives us a percentage of wages. So if I made $100,000, if I projected $100,000 at this restaurant, I should be paying out about what? 35% of that should go to wages. There's that 4% profit that you're working for. Um, there's some depreciation, there's some marketing, so on and so forth. So we wanna stay in these tolerances because uh, these are, this information is provided by the risk, the risk management association. And that's what bankers use to, they use that information for loans and insurance companies use that information to uh, provide insurance for you. And yes, if you wanna access these, you will need personal login information for UNM, or you could visit your small business development center near you and all of our advisors and directors throughout the state have access to these databases. Let me close some of these windows I have open. Okay, I want to leave at least 10 minutes for Q&A, so I will pace myself here. So since this is a, a COVID-19 sponsored webinar, here is a slide giving you the most up-to-date and accurate uh, resources for information regarding operating a business during COVID-19. The first one is for the New Mexico Department of Health. Uh, then we have the New Mexico Safe Certified Program, which is if, if you wanted to increase your capacity limits or open your restaurant, you had to take that course. It's just a course on um, how you should be operating during COVID-19. OSHA has great guidance on preparing your workplaces for COVID-19. The Center for D Disease Control and Prevention has great information on their website. 
the um, EEOC, again, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has a great article. And if you're gonna be an employer or you are an employer of somebody right now, read that article. It's what you should know about COVID-19, the ADA, the Rehabilitation Act and other EEO laws. And they update this article as new information comes up. And then NewMexico.gov, they have the most up-to-date information related to the state of New Mexico. And if you wanted to learn about any grant opportunities that may be available through the state or through the Economic Development Department, you could visit the NewMexico.gov website or the New Mexico Economic Development Department website. Perfect. How we measure our success. Now that we talked about how we can help you, this is how you could help the SBDC. As part of our offering our services, we need your help to ensure our services are around for more years to come. So we ask that you participate in our surveys, report economic impacts because of our assistance to your advisor or to your director, and write a letter of support to your local legislator about your experience with the SBDC. All information is kept confidential and is only reported in aggregate to our funders, the state of New Mexico, and the Small Business Administration. This slide provides uh, contact information for SBDC programs, PTAC, IBA, and the New Mexico Tech TCA. The Procurement Technical Assistance Center, or PTAC, is a government-funded program providing assistance to small uh, businesses who want to sell their goods or services to the government, educational institutions, or tribal entities. The International Business Accelerator, IBA, is a one-stop shop of resources for New Mexican businesses and individuals wishing to introduce their products or services into the global market. And the NMT TCA offers no cost confidential counseling regarding intellectual property. This slide continues the list of our small business resource partners score or the Service Corps of Retired Executives, WEST, or the Women's Business Center Program, and VBOC, or the Veterans Business Outreach Center. And here is the contact information for your small business support team. We are funded by the SBA, and many people ask about SBA loans. So I wanna show you a link to the Small Business Resource Guide. It's right here. And if you want to download this guide, I have a, a box full of these guides in the office too. They print them, they print very few. So if you're a, a paper saver, please uh, look at this online. And on page 27, they have a list of SBA lenders that participate in SBA lending programs. And the SBA doesn't directly lend to small business owners or those seeking a small business loan. They, what they do is they provide a loan guarantee if you meet the criteria. So what a loan guarantee does for you is the SBA will make a loan look more appealing to a bank, a credit union, or an alternative lender. Most of you on the call right now, in fact, let me see by a show of hands, how many of you are already in business? Okay, I see one already in business. The rest of you are not in business yet. If you're already in business, that you're, you make a relationship with your bank or credit union and you'll be more apt to get a loan. If you are a new business starting out, you a bank or a credit union might not consider you. You might have to go to an alternative lender. And the alternative lenders I wanna highlight here are West or the Women's Business, uh, the Women's Center, uh, the Women's Business center program and um, the loan fund and dream spring if you have a business and you want to expand and you're going to create jobs uh, the certified development companies would be right for you but if you're a new business you're starting out you want a business loan a micro loan an equipment loan uh, you could try a bank but most likely you'll have to contact dream spring the loan fund or west and then after the list of lender of participating uh, lending institutions, we have the funding programs. So the most uh, common programs that I help with are the 7A loan programs, which are loans for equipment, property, real estate, and microloans. 
If you're in business already, you might have cap lines, lines of credit, or express loans for things like um, if you're a contractor to purchase the equipment for your, your project, or if you're an importer, exporter to purchase inventory. And then a certified development uh, company loan is a loan. If you're already in business, you want to expand your business and say you're going to hire 10 new individuals in a manufacturing facility. They will work with the bank to provide half of your loan. So say you need a loan for $100,000, $50,000 will come from the bank on an SBE loan guarantee, and $50,000 will come from the certified development company. Let me go back to our slides. And then of course, the New Mexico Economic Development Department on the bottom, and Johanna Nelson is awesome. Uh, she oversees, I believe it's the Collateral Assistance Program, or it might be uh, the JTIP program, but she is awesome. She, she heads the, the whole organization. She does a great job. And I wanna, uh, this is our, our final slide. I wanna thank everybody for spending time with me today. And now I will get to the Q&A. And I saw somebody was raising their hand. Since we have a small group today, we have, a, I think we have, yeah, seven. If you want to speak and ask a question, just raise your hand for me and I'll allow you to speak. If you don't, just put it in the Q&A and I'll be happy to answer it for you. I'm going to check the chat, see if we had anything from before. Okay, I saw the, the question from earlier. Uh, Sylvia, you wanted uh, to go over the, one of the first slides, which was the EDD programs. So let me just show you, I'll go to the Economic Development Department website. Yes. Okay. So the, it's gonm.biz. And then under business development are the programs that you would need for small business. So I like to use the main heading, which is the New Mexico EDD programs for business. And the most common programs you might use as a small business owner, if you have a business already and you're going to expand and you're in a manufacturing agricultural type sector, a job training incentive program might be right for you. Most of you will want to go into the finance development. And we talked about LIDA, uh, collateral assistance program and opportunity zones. And if you have a question and wanna go further into those, just put it in the Q&A. Let's see. Will it, the, and then I have a question Patricia asked, will the email, the follow-up email contain a link to the slide presentation? Let me bring up that email and at the, the very top, the second link is those slides and PDF. So yes. And here I'll put this on the screen just so you could see. I, I added even a, a few more links than what I mentioned in the slideshow. You're always great about giving homework. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Leslie. Uh, Leslie, is there any um, event coming up that you wanted to talk about while we have a, a captive audience? Oh, yes. I, you know, I love my webinars because we have so many that are going to be fantastic, especially coming up at the end of this week. We have cryptocurrency. Is it right for your business? We have cash management tomorrow. Cash is king. We have a lean business model to uh, starting a business you know, working on that business plan, we have PPP, idle and employee retention tax credits. What's the next step on that? So take a look at nmsbdc.org. They're all no cost to you. Perfect, thank you, Leslie. I promised you I would show you that I'm a real person while I'm doing Q&A, so I put my camera back on. I had a question come up in the Q&A I'm interested in learning more about LIDA. I'm in Sierra County, New Mexico, female veteran, trying to find good options. Thank you for your all's time. Well, thank you for your question, Sylvia. 
Well, Lena, if you want to open a small business, you're going to make a big investment. And these are and what Lena does is they have a pot of money set aside at the state level and they could award it to different municipalities or counties to uh, spur economic development by reimbursing a business owner for um, uh, their capital, some of their capital investments. So what they look for is wage and job creation, new capital investment, environmentally sustainable outcomes. Uh, you're in Sierra County, so I believe that is an underserved area of New Mexico. And uh, you, your business has to make a significant community impact and any business going into Sierra County would probably make a significant uh, community impact, especially any new employers paying a reasonable wage. Those entities that qualify are those that manufacture, process or assemble things. So mainly manufacturing, those in the uh, agricultural arena, those in the mining arena, or those who are considered economic based employers. So say you, so this is where they could consider retail and restaurants as, as um, for funding. So say you were uh, solely an online based retailer, you had a, you wanted to build a warehouse in Sierra County and you sold products primarily online. You're gonna be an economic based employer because most likely most of your income is gonna be coming from uh, people from out of New Mexico. Non-qualifying entities, usually it's retail, uh, service businesses, public entities. And to apply for it, you really just have to have your business plan. You have to have, uh, here we go, three years of financial statements or a pro forma, which are the financial projections. Uh, funding sources and uses, because they won't, they remember they don't give you the startup funds, they only reimburse you. But the job creation and salary benefit information uh, project capital investment. They're wanting to make sure you put a big capital investment into this uh, complete economic impact data sheet, which they, they allow you to uh, access when, when they interview. And here's the project life cycle. And again, the context, Mr. Juan Torres. I hope that gave you some more insights into that program. So if you have not, please put in a follow-up question. And then uh, Patricia asks, how do I access IBIS World? Unless you have uh, a login for UNM, you have to visit your um, small business development center and they could pull the reports for you. It's one of our paid services. We actually pay a lot of money for that database and UNM pays a ton of money. Um, so, you know, take advantage of that. Just set up an appointment, have your business advisor pull that report for you and go over some of the high points like we did today in the restaurant industry. Perfect. Let me look at our chat. Perfect. Thank you all. Thank you all for attending. I don't see anything in the q and I'm going to be here for the next few minutes. And if, again, if you want to speak, Instead of typing your question in, please raise your hand and I'll allow you to speak. I don't see any phone callers on the line this time, so I don't think we have to allow anyone to speak. Here, I got another cue. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Carolyn. And Carolyn, if you want to speak, raise your hand. If you want to shout out your SBDC, Carolyn Arias is uh, the administrative assistant in our SBDC in um, Roswell. She's awesome. She's been with us for a very long time. Let me allow you to talk, Carolyn, and you could give us a shout out. Can you hear me, Chris? I could hear you very faintly. Oh, good. Sometimes my my uh, microphone works and sometimes not. I Just so you know, I am from Carolyn from the Small Business Development Center in Roswell, and I sit in on a lot of the uh, trainings that we do just to kind of keep myself updated. And Chris just does such an excellent job. Thank you, Carolyn. And Carolyn, do you, do you pull the reports down there? Do you, do you use IBIS World? We do. We, we provide industry reports to our uh, clients as part of their homework process to kind of uh, get a better view of their industry in, in a way that they haven't uh, looked at it before. Perfect. Thank you. So, Whether they're startup or, or growing, those reports are just... I can't even I can't even put a, a value on the a price on the value of those reports. I'll put a value on them for you, Carolyn. Eight hundred <laughs> to twelve hundred dollars. 
you were to buy them directly from IPAS. Perfect. I appreciate it, Carolyn. If you have anything else to say, you go right ahead. I think I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. I don't see any hands up. I don't see anything in the q and I don't see anything in the chat. I will, Leslie, if you're on the line, if you want to have a lot of, give a last update about anything, you go right ahead. And if not, we will uh, end for today. Uh, again, you know me, I always like to remind people that we, well, I want to remind people that you get a follow-up email, Chris will send it to you with the presentation, but after the webinar, we put them on demand pre-recorded for seven days. Then after the seven days, we add them to our YouTube channel. So you can watch any of our webinars that we've had in the past. Um, I think we have them since March or something, even once before that. So if there's a topic that you want to know information about, or there's a speaker that we have that you're interested in uh, seeing more of those webinars, please visit um, New Mexico Small Business Development Center YouTube channel, and you can watch any of those pre-recorded on-demand videos. Perfect, great point. Thank you for that. Let's see, I think this one's only on YouTube. I think it's already uh, outlived its uh, seven day uh, on demand. And I don't see anything else, so I'm going to tell everybody thank you for spending time with us. Leslie, if you don't have anything for me, we could end it for all. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.